In this WordPress tutorial, we will learn about a feature named post formats. I think the best way to understand what a post format is, is to begin by looking at the problem that post formats were designed to solve. So throughout this series, we've been building a basic theme and all of our posts look nearly identical to one another. They all use the exact same colors and layout and typography and spacing. Now, if we lived in a world where the only content we would ever post is a standard news article or blog post, that's a-okay. But that's not the world we live in. We will typically want to post simply a status update, or in other words, a quick blurb of text that doesn't need a title. Or perhaps we want to link to an external website and we want that link or post to be styled differently than our self-authored content. Or maybe we want to add an image or a photo gallery and we want it to use a black background so the photos really pop. So the general idea that I'm getting at here is that if we're posting different types of content, our theme should have different types of presentation to match that type of content. So this is exactly where post formats come into play. Now the team of developers that create the core WordPress software have put together a standardized list of nine post formats. Now, because I don't want this tutorial to become two hours long, we are only going to focus on the first three, a side gallery and link. Very quickly, I want to point out that even though the core WordPress software has the capability of assigning a post format to a post, the responsibility lies on each individual theme to actively enable post format support, which is why depending on the themes you've used in the past, you may have never even been aware that post formats exist. So in the remainder of this tutorial, we will be writing the code in our theme files to enable post format support and then handcraft different styles or presentations for an aside, a link, and a photo gallery. Let's get started. So our first step is to enable post format support. And to do that, we're going to jump into the functions.php file of our theme folder. Now in an earlier lesson, we set up a function named learning WordPress setup. And this is where we did things such as registering navigation menus and adding support for thumbnails or featured images. So this is the same function where we will add support for post formats. So I'll add a comment to stay organized, add post format support. I'm going to use a function named add theme support. You can see that we used this same function earlier in the series to add thumbnail support. So we can use this same function multiple times, passing it different arguments to add different features. So in this case, we want to add support for post formats, comma, and then we can specify which of the nine post formats we want to support. So we only wanted to support a side gallery and link. So let's create an array. And then within that array, we will say aside, gallery, and link. And then I'll be sure to include a semicolon at the end of this line of code. Now, before I save the changes to this file, so before I save this new code, I want to pull up a quick before and after. So in our dashboard, if we begin to create a new post, you'll notice that there is no module in the right-hand side for post format. But as soon as we save this new code, control save, if we come back to this add new post screen, we can see a new module named format and we can choose between standard aside gallery and link. So let's attempt to create an aside. This is an aside. It does not need a title. You can think of this post as a status update like you would see on a social network app. Lorem ipsum just to take up more space. So if we publish this, and refresh our website, we see a rather boring looking post. But this is where the fun begins. Now that we've designated this as an aside, or we've differentiated it from a standard post, we can write code and styles in our theme files that are only applied to asides. So in the index.php file of our theme folder, within the loop, we can see that this line of code, get template part, with an argument of content is responsible for the meat and potatoes of our posts. 
Now, if we pass this function a second argument, it can become much more powerful and flexible. So I'm going to add a comma and then get post format. So now, instead of this line always attempting to pull in content.php of our theme folder, this function will dynamically include the name of the post format. So now, in this case, this line of code, when it runs through the loop and meets this new aside post, will attempt to pull in a file in our theme folder named content-aside.php. So now it's as simple as creating that new file in our theme folder. New file content hyphen aside. Oh, hello. So if I save and refresh, all that we see is oh, hello, instead of the standard output for a post. So now we can simply edit this content hyphen aside dot PHP to include the dynamic content that we want to include. So let's use the article element, I will give it a class of post and post aside so that we have a unique class to target in our CSS. And then I simply want to output the content. So PHP, use the the content function. So this should be rather bare bones. But now we can very easily adjust its appearance. So we have this unique class of post aside. So in our style sheet, let's search for our article styles. So let's create a new comment to stay organized aside styles, we can say article with a class of post aside. Let's give it a larger font size. Let's give it a yellow background. Give it a bit of padding. Let's give it rounded edges. So border radius five pixel, let's give it a faint shadow, box shadow, three pixels horizontal and vertically with a three pixel blur and we will use a very light gray. So if we save and refresh, we see that our side post is styled very differently from a standard post. Now let's imagine that above this text, we want to include in a small font, the username, the at symbol, and then the date. So in our content aside file, I will create a new line of code, P for paragraph, I will give it a class of mini meta so we can style it. The first bit of text that we want to output is the user's name who posted the update or the aside. So I'll drop into PHP. I will use the the author function. We then wanted to include the at symbol and the date. So I will drop back into PHP, use the the time function. And we can specify exactly how we want to format the date. Quotes, uppercase F for the month, lowercase j for the day of the month, and then uppercase Y for the four digit year. So if we save and refresh, here is the exact text that we wanted to output. Now let's add CSS so that this metadata is very small. So we'll target the mini meta class. Font size, 68%. We want to remove this bottom margin so that there is not a large gap here. So margin zero. Let's also use a lighter color. Much better. So we've given the aside post format enough attention for now. Let's transition to the link post format. Let's imagine that we wanted to share a really neat link with all of the visitors of our website. So for example, here's a guide on CSS3 transforms by the brilliant David DeSandro. And let's imagine that I wanna share this URL with all of my visitors. I will copy this URL, head over to the WordPress dashboard, create a new post. In the title field, I will describe what I'm sharing. Anyone who wants to learn about CSS 3D transforms needs to check out this guide by David DeSandro. I can simply paste the URL into the content area of the post, choose the link format, publish. Now, if we visit our website, 
This is clearly not the pinnacle when it comes to formatting a quick link. This is using the standard post presentation. So let's create our own link presentation by creating a new file in our theme folder named content hyphen link. So we will begin with the article element. I will use a class of post and post link. So we have something unique to tack onto with our CSS. Within this element, I simply want to create a link. Now the text that we want users to click on is simply the title. So PHP, the title, and the actual URL itself is the content field. Now because I don't want WordPress to use any formatting for the content, instead of simply saying the content, I'm going to do something a bit different. I will echo the output of get the content. So this way we will literally just get the URL that we pasted in and WordPress will not try to format the text by adding paragraph code for us or anything like that. So if we save and refresh, we see a very streamlined presentation for the link. It's simply the text and if we click it, it takes us to the link. Now let's add a bit of styling so that this link stands out. So let's use a nearly identical style that we used for the aside, only instead of yellow for the background, let's use blue. So for article post aside, I'll add a comma and include post link. So we will inherit all of these styles from the aside element. Let's add a comment to stay organized. Link post format styles. Let's style the link itself within the post link article so that it is a block level element so it itself has the padding instead of its container element. And since we're doing that, let's remove the padding from the outer article element and also override the yellow background color with a nice blue value. Much better. And I just realized that I forgot to capitalize the S in DeSandro. Okay, so behind the scenes, I just corrected that. My apologies to David and all of the DeSandros in the world. All right, so our link post format is now complete. Let's change gears and focus on the gallery post format. So let's take a quick look at the out of the box standard default WordPress photo gallery. So I'm creating a brand new post. I will give it a title of animal photographs. Use the add media button. In the left hand column, there is a create gallery link. You now have the chance to click on any and all images that you want to include in a new gallery. So I will choose this, 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 and this. Look for the create new gallery button in the bottom right. You can even give each image a caption. Squirrel, bird on fence, cat head, <laughs> Jumping bird. These are amazing captions, I know. So I will link to the media file. I want four columns so that all images sit on one row. And then I will click insert gallery. So I will click publish. Let's go visit our website. So by default, WordPress will output styles for us that floats the images so they all sit on one line and adds a faint border and includes the caption. But if we designate this post as a gallery and update, we can now take control of this presentation by creating content hyphen gallery .php. So let's imagine that we want this gallery area to use a black or dark gray background. So the photos really pop. Let's imagine that we do not want to include any of this meta data text. And let's imagine that we want the title text to be white and centered horizontally. So let's make all of those things happen. So in our text editor, I will create a new file named content hyphen gallery. Begin with the article element, give it a class of post and also post gallery. So we want to include a heading level two or any element that you want to use with the name of the post. So PHP, the title. And then we also want to output the content. PHP, the content. 
Now let's write accompanying CSS for this post gallery. So in our style sheet, create a new section to stay organized. Post format gallery styles. Articles that have a class of post gallery should have a dark background color. Not quite black, but a very dark gray. The text color should be white. Let's give it 20 pixels of padding. And we want it to center the title text. So I will say article, post gallery, target any of the heading level two elements, and make sure that they use text align center. Now I personally do not care for the borders that WordPress adds by default to the images. So we can overrule that by selecting the post gallery articles, dig in for any image elements, use the border property and say none. Now because WordPress assigns that border style in line in the HTML code, it can be difficult to overrule. So I'm going to use the important tag. Now a quick note, please do not use this unless you absolutely need to. This is one of the few scenarios where it actually makes sense to use the important tag. But generally, littering your style sheet with the important tag is not a best practice. So we have completed the presentation for our gallery post type. Now before we close out this lesson, the final topic that we need to address is making sure that our post formats retain these unique styles throughout the website. So for example, we know that in index PHP, which is responsible for outputting the code on our homepage, we used the get post format code so that WordPress will automatically use the appropriate content hyphen aside or content hyphen gallery. But index.php isn't the only lens to view our website through. So for example, what if someone searched for photographs. Clearly, the results will return the animal photographs gallery, but we have not told our search view to use the custom presentations that we created. Now, all we need to do to solve this is head over to the search.php file in our theme folder and adjust the line of code that outputs the content. So just like we did towards the very beginning of this lesson, we can add a second argument, get post format. Save, refresh the search results, and we are in business. So that takes care of the search view. What if someone uses the archive view? So for example, what if they view the monthly archive for 2014, September? Clearly our post format presentations are not being used. To fix this, we can hop over to our theme folder, load the archive.php file. Here's the line of code that's outputting the content, and again, just provided a second argument, git post format. And finally, we would also need to adjust our single or permalink view by editing the single.php file. Now I think you can extrapolate what we just did for search and archive and give yourself a bit of homework by adjusting your single view. Or you can always download the source files for this demo theme, which are updated at the end of every lesson. That will bring this lesson to a close. Thank you for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks, bye.